Hey everyone, my name is Hannah Flood. I am an MMJ or a multimedia journalist in Madison, Wisconsin. So what an MMJ means is I'm a reporter, uh, but basically I'm a one person unit. I shoot, write, edit all of my own video and then present it on air at the end of the day. My main beat, is the capital, um, but I'm also general assignment, which means that I could end up with any story that gets assigned to me that day or could end up anywhere in our viewing area covering something. So I'm gonna show you what it's like a day as an MMJ, so come right along. So my day starts with me coming into work and looking for story ideas that I can pursue for the day. Um, that usually means calling sources, checking emails, looking at things that are happening in our area or around the country and how to advance them to localize them. We're looking at things that are unique, that are new, that are visual, um, and that are going to be a benefit to our viewers. And we're also looking at how is that gonna fit into our newscast and the other content that we're covering for the day. So it's the first thing that I do when I get into work. And around 10.15 is the morning meeting where we get together and come up with the game plan. So here's an example of a list of stories that we're working on today. Some things that are on this list are things that we already knew about, assigned stories. That's what I'm working on today. A story that we already knew about that we received a press release on. But sometimes, you see down here in ideas, these are ideas that people bring to the table. So our morning meeting, we compare what's already going on, who's working, and what ideas people bring to the table, and then we assign who's going where and what time their story is going to air. And then it's up to us to make it happen. So as I mentioned, I was assigned to a story today. We know that we need to be down on campus at 1.45 for the availability with the chancellor on this. So in the meantime, I'll be reading this 31 page report about what they'll be talking about. I'm gonna get a web story ready. This information is embargoed until three o'clock. So we won't be able to report on anything quite yet, but at three o'clock when the embargo is lifted, I want us to be able to have a strong web story to get online and to get onto our social media ahead of our newscasts. I think it's important to note that every day here is extremely different. This is not my typical routine of starting my day reading over a dense document like this and starting a web script. Uh, there's really no true formula to being an MMJ. You kind of take the story that you get and run with it and this is the way that the formula is working out today since later this afternoon is when I go out and get my interview. So it's, it can really be all over the map. It can be something like this where you start with the web story. A lot of times a web story is the last thing that I do in my day. So as MMJs we just have to be flexible and, and ready to go with whatever task we're handed. Okay, you'll notice I've changed my outfit into something I think is more appropriate to uh, for going to a press conference with the UW Chancellor. That's where I'm off to to talk about that report that I just wrote the web story on. So I want to show you, my producer behind the camera, Ben, is helping me out with this. I want to show you what I, I leave this station with. That's my bag, that includes my notebooks, pens, any, anything that I might need on the road, my makeup. The backpack, which has all of the audio gear anything I might need related to the camera, the tripod, and the camera itself. So every time I leave the station, I pack all of these things and hit the road. Sometimes just getting there can be the hardest part. Is to create a campus that goes far beyond that and encourages individual and institutional openness and inclusion for all of its members. Okay, press conference is done. It's about two o'clock. So now I hop back in the car and get back to the station and I need to get a story to air for the five and six, potentially the four. I'll find out when I get there. Okay, so it's 2.45, I'm back at the station. I just checked in with my two producers. They're sitting right back there um, to see what they wanted for the story. They have to look at how much time they have in their show and how the story fits into the rest of their content for that day. So I know I'm in the five and in the six and I know my format. I'll be reading my script on air and then we'll be airing sound bites from the press conference that I went to today. So when we're putting together our stories, there's kind of two sides to it. This would be the visual side. This is me picking what sound bites we're gonna use, picking the video that we're gonna use. Um, and then there's the writing side. This is what a show looks like. Um, and then over here is where I'll write in my, my script that I will read on air. Always time for a quick snack break. All right, story is written. Story is edited. Now I've got five minutes to do my makeup before the five o'clock show. 
The time is now 4.45, which means we're 15 minutes away from the 5 o'clock news, which means I need to get ready to go on air. Alrighty, it's showtime. Campus, and only 65% of students of color say they feel welcome on campus. Okay, five o'clock, check. Now it's time to turn it around and do my six o'clock version. Live from the WMTV studios, your news authority. NBC 15 News at 6 starts now. Last fall, the UW Chancellor assigned a group to research two white supremacist affiliated groups that operated on campus during the 1920s. NBC 15's Hannah Flood joins us now with more on how the university plans on recognizing that past while moving forward. One of the big questions the study group was facing was what to do about two campus spaces named after two men that were previously a part of those white supremacy groups. The study group recommended not removing those names immediately and instead focusing on a path forward. The study group said the difficult past should not be erased. Instead, voices of those who have and continue to face discrimination on campus should be celebrated. A campus climate study done by the UW in the fall found that only 65% of students of, co of color felt welcome on campus. And that is truly a motivation to say we need to keep working on being a better place and a better community. But unless we acknowledge that, that this wasn't a welcoming place and that for some people it might still not be, uh, we're never going to get to the campus that we want to be. The study group also recommended that the university should invest in cultural studies programs and bringing diverse students to campus. Today, the chancellor agreed to move forward with those plans. She said this fall, the university will start a public history project to display stories of those who fought and overcame prejudice on campus. All right, and there you have it. That is the day in the life of an MMJ or a broadcast reporter. I hope that you guys were able to learn something from this about what it means to be in the broadcast industry. Um, I, I think some of the biggest takeaways as you move forward um, with your career in communications would be for broadcast reporters, your, your biggest enemy is time. So, you know, when people ask, well, what's your deadline? Well, my deadline was 15 minutes ago because this isn't posted to the website yet. Um, so think, think about time and something that I wasn't able to show today and just the story that I was doing um, is characters. We're really looking for the real people. I think what would have set this story apart if I would have had a chance to talk to some student organizations, um, some people of color who are experiencing um, you know, prejudice or racism on campus, um, you know, or, or a UW historian who could really talk about this and break it down. We want those real people. So especially when I'm working at the Capitol, I'm constantly finding ways to get out of the Capitol, to not talk to the officials, to the lawmakers, to not do a story on a press conference. Um, so in any way that you can help reporters find those people that are impacted by the stories that you're trying to tell. Um, if if you can build relationships with reporters and kind of understand how they operate, what they need, um, and get in touch with them ahead of time. Um, if, if I can plan out a day, a few days in advance, or even one day in advance, it can make all the difference from making a mediocre story to something really great. So thank you all so much. I hope that you learned a thing or two, and good luck.